All right, Logan, thank you so much for being here uh, with four of the girls in New York, no less, in person. We are honored you're making time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. You need no introduction for our listeners, who many of whom are American, many of whom are Williams fans, Logan Sargent fans, but you are an F1 driver for Williams uh, from Fort Lauderdale. And you have done so much in motorsport, and we can't wait to dive into it. But first, you're heading into your second home race of the year at Austin. How are you feeling heading into it? Well, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, but no, I feel like FP1 Austin last year was my first time doing sort of an official outing in, in Formula One. So to come back here is, is going to be amazing. And I just feel like Austin as a whole, like it's the energy, the atmosphere is unbelievable. I feel like you can really feel the energy in Austin and it's a race that I look forward to. I'm looking forward to going back to this weekend. It's an amazing track. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. see what it brings, but it should be really, really fun. Hopefully you're packing your cowboy boots and such. <laughs> oh, I don't actually have any, which <laughs> we got to fix that. Maybe I need to get some. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, I'm, it's, it's one of my favorite cities and tracks, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be great. So let's go back a little bit to the beginning for a second. You and your family moved out to Europe when you were 12 years old to pursue this, this dream. What was that like? And did you feel like you had to make a decision between F1 and IndyCar really early on? It's honestly a good question because I feel like just growing up as a as a, a young kid, especially with how young I was, I didn't really understand sort of, I guess, the measure of the decisions that of were being course, made at yeah. that time. <laughs> it was just some sort of go with the flow. But um, I mean, we got to a point where, you know, racing in America, we had sort of reached a, a limit, I mm -hmm. guess, of, of what it had to offer to, to in that point of time. Um, and we were sort of just chasing like where is the best competition and where is that next level? And that was Europe, um, realistically. You know, it, all you ever heard racing in America when I was young was, yeah, but in Europe they're amazing. In Europe they're amazing. So I was like, okay, let's find out. <laughs> Let us go. <laughs> and um, I remember me, my dad, and my brother. We went to like a, a lunch or dinner or something like that. And he just asked, would you guys want to move to Europe and race? And me being your dad just asked you that. Yeah, me being twelve, I'm like. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. That's so well, let's see what happens. And a lot did happen. And, yeah, just <laughs> took it from there and, and yeah. kept going. But it was a big change. But um, Where did you guys first move to off the bat? Like, where did you settle? So, realistically, um, the first place was Lugano in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And we went to an American school there, which was an amazing school. Um, actually, looking back at it, it was an amazing time, for sure, in my life. But, um, yeah, a lot of tough times. A lot of times where, of course, you just... You want to go home, you miss your friends, course, you miss your yeah. family. Um, but yeah, good people around me kept me going. There you go. <laughs> so you're probably sick of everybody asking you about being American in F1, but what was it like moving over as an American, kind of going through that pipeline in Europe, and then also being an American driver now in F1? It was definitely difficult just because of the amount that you have to sacrifice to do so. And I, f I really do feel like racing in Europe, you have to pretty much move there permanently. You can't really do that, the, the whole back and forth thing. It's just too much. But um, it was difficult. I just feel like I was quite lucky that I had a lot of really, really good people around me, even from when I you know, first came to Europe. I mean, even the management I'm with now, Infinity, I started with them when I was 14 in, wow. in, in Europe. So I've, I've had those people with me from the, sec the, the moment I moved to Europe and, and made that switch. And um, I feel like having that support the whole way through, always putting me with good teams, always putting me with people who believed I could do it, it was, was, was nice. And so going back to the American side of things, probably a question you get all the time again, is this rise in American fandom. I'm sure it's been great for you, and do you think it's going to help us get more American drivers into the F1 pipeline? Definitely. I think I've actually looked recently at like the, the younger Carters coming through, mm -hmm. um, and I see so many more American flags next to their names than for compared to when I was coming through. And um, I, I think, hopefully I've showed that it's possible, but I think you'll, you'll start to see more and more names, you know, as potential um, coming through. Yeah, are you close with any of the American drivers kind of in IndyCar? I know you raced with Pato and Colton a bit. Yeah, so I, I mean, grew up racing against Colton, Pato, Kyle. Um, who else out? I'm sure there's more <laughs> there's out there. All of them. But, um, <laughs> I, I mean, me and Kyle were, were like best friends. Um, we've been best friends since a really young age. So, um, yeah. Yeah. 
And so going, shifting gears a little bit to Williams, we're about two years on the dot from them announcing you as part of their Drivers Academy. What has it been like working with Williams so far, especially James Vowles this year? I started with Williams 2020, at the end of 2021, and honestly, the support throughout the past two years has been amazing. And uh, even through the ups and downs, they've always been there to you know, push me forward. And I feel like this year, James has been absolutely amazing. He's coming to the team. He's honestly really changed the mindset of, of everyone and, and really pushed it forwards. And I feel like even with me, from a driver point of view, he really understands it. He really understands the human element of it as well. Mm-hmm. And um, understands you know, the process of moving forward. And he's worked with young drivers in the past, so he, he has that, that background and that's been really beneficial to me. Yeah, I feel like Williams as a team does such an incredible job at cultivating the full pipeline. Like we just spoke to Jamie Chadwick a few weeks ago, and she's part of the whole academy as well. It's it's incredible. Speaking of other drivers, I know you're close with some of them on the grid. You and Oscar had your legendary FP3, um, F3 battle. What what was that like, or like what's it like with him now? Or have you had any other drivers? Yeah, I well, Oscar, we we've been friends for yeah. I don't know, since we were 14 probably, Amazing. <laughs> a long time ago. We, we were racing cards together, we were teammates in karting, we've been teammates on the way to, to Formula One. And I feel like with Oscar, we've all had that rivalry, but it's always been like healthy, we've always been friendly. Um, it's never gotten anything you know, nasty. Other than that, I, I mean, George, I've known for a really long time. He's always been there to help me and support me along, which is nice. But Oscar is definitely the one I know best. And so we've heard you on some interviews talk about clearing your mind half the battle. Well, maybe half is an exaggeration, but just mentally in F1, it's so challenging. Do you have any race day or race weekend rituals or how do you help clear your mind heading into big days? It's tricky. I, I think from a mindset point of view, a lot of it comes down to the preparation that you've done before the race. Yeah. So you want to you want to believe that you've done everything in your power to to come into that round as prepared and, and, and as ready as possible. And I feel like that's half the battle. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want to have your your routine sort of in a, you want to go through your routine every weekend sort of in the same way. And um, that just sort of puts you in like a, gives you a level of comfort that you've, you're in the right, you're in the right place. You've done everything right and you're ready to go. So I feel like that's the first bit. And then in tricky days, you just, of course, it's difficult. It's difficult for everyone. You just try and stay as chilled as chilled as you can. Yeah. And um, honestly, once you're in the car, it, it all goes away. You you just yeah. It, it switches that natural instinct. So it's really more the the build up where you have time to think about it. But once you're actually driving, it just comes back to to natural. Yeah, and we were talking about this right before you came in about your jet lag. So you haven't really experienced jet lag, but is it hard to maintain your routines when you're Literally traveling across the entire world for a year. I mean, I've, I've experienced really bad jet lag in my life. <laughs> Just not lately. But for some, somehow, I, I don't know how. <laughs> but this year, I've, I've managed. Well, I'm not gonna say I don't know how. We put in a lot of effort to, to try and, and, and counteract it the best we can. I feel like we've done a really good job between, you know, me, my trainer, um, and the team as well to, to be on top of it. And I feel like that's been really nice to, to go to places on the other side of the world and still sleep sleep good. Um, you might have to like write a cheat sheet for everyone else because that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, I need to keep it a secret though. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll chat to you after Abu Dhabi and see how you're feeling. <laughs> it's, a lot of it's, yeah, exactly. That's going to be a big one. Yeah. But I, I feel like a lot of it's just, it, it's, it's all out there. It, it, it's just, it's the simple stuff, but it makes a difference. Um, there's apps that can help as well. Um, cool. When to drink caffeine, when not to drink caffeine. Um, when you need light exposure, stuff like that. It's yeah. it's all the basics, but it makes a difference. So um, last weekend was really tough in Qatar. Tell us about that. It was just unbelievable for us watching on TV to see the conditions. Have you ever experienced anything like that in your entire life? Well, f- firstly, outside of racing, I've never felt heat like that in my life. Yeah. In, um, even coming from Fort Lauderdale, so there you go. Even coming from Florida, <laughs> that was something insane. and. Um, yeah, not nice, to be honest. It's, it was too much um, to, to sort of feel like we had to, <laughs> to, yeah. to drive in. But um, I feel like it wasn't helped by the fact I came into the weekend not feeling great. Yeah. And um, was just sort of muscling through it. Um, but you did a really good job at it. Thank like, you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the race, I, what my body went through is not, not nice at all. I never really experienced anything like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, everyone struggled, and I think yeah. for me, coming into it not feeling great was 
made it even worse. Of course. It's not, not safe conditions for anyone to be driving in, so. I think it was just sort of, you were trying to keep your eyes open. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be hot this weekend in Austin, but not that hot, so it'll be a walk in the park for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, I was actually looking at the weather and it's like, it's perfect right right now, and then yeah, into like the weekend it starts to <laughs> yeah. come up a lot. But they were getting ready for you guys. Right. <laughs> okay, to finish this off, we always try to do some fun, kind of rapid fire, hot take questions. Nothing too difficult, but first one hopefully should be easy. Favorite track so far this season? Oh, um, Japan. Yeah, it's hard to beat. It was so good, <laughs> amazing. First sector, the best. That's awesome. Street circuit or classic track? Um, they're both amazing in their own ways. I like a classic track. Nice. This might be difficult. You have three home races, and I know you haven't raced to Vegas yet, but Miami, Austin, or Vegas? I'm going to say, as a track, Austin. Okay. Um, as an event, I've never done it, but I'm going to guess Vegas. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, favorite big four sport. I have to like literally write these out because I don't follow any other sport besides F1. <laughs> NFL, NHL, MLB, or NBA? Got me in a tight spot with NFL and NBA, <laughs> but I'll go with NFL. Okay. And your team? Always Miami. Yep, Miami Dolphins <laughs> through and through. But I, I do love N NHL and NBA as well. Yeah. All good. All good. Uh, favorite pump up song before a race? If you have your headphones on, you're about to get in a car. So it, it's kind of been changing lately, but um, I generally love Lose Yourself by Eminem. Oh. I love a lot of the 50 That's Cent songs, like yeah. from back, you know, the, the old school rap. Um, yeah, it, it switches, but yeah. there's even Jay-Z has some good ones. <laughs> yeah, there's Lose lyrics. Yourself by Eminem was my middle school basketball pump up song, and it made there me you. feel like an <laughs> yeah. F1 driver, so I feel validated that <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that's getting you going. Back to the classics. <laughs> I love Drake as well, yeah. but yeah, I would say that's a good good one for a bit that's of motivation. Awesome. To get in the mindset. Uh, Go-to coffee order? Uh, just, if it's hot, an iced latte. If it's cold, just normal latte. Okay. okay. Oat milk. Of course. That's it. <laughs> All right, and lastly, favorite hometown spot or recommendation? Beach, restaurant, park, could be anything. Oof. From home. Yeah. Home, home. Um, I'm gonna say there's a restaurant called Cafe Moderano in Fort, well, it's just north of Fort Lauderdale Perfect. and it is unbelievable, awesome. so good, so yeah. Do you ever try to make it back to Fort Lauderdale like when you were there for Miami this year? It's tough because we have a lot going on and we have to stay in Miami, but um, I, I did get home for a couple days before the race nice. and the night after the race. Okay. So yeah, I got I got a bit of time at home, which was nice. See the family, see my dog. Oh, I'm, I miss, the most important. Gotta miss her. <laughs> what kind? Um, she's actually just a mix of, of loads things. and loads of breeds. <laughs> but um, yeah, she was a rescue, so she's, she's, she's awesome. Amazing. Well, Logan, thank you so much. This was so great. We loved having you in New York, and we can't wait to cheer you on this weekend thank in you. Austin. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much.